today we're traveling back in time to 1995 to look at a set of utilities Microsoft created for power users called Power Toys. Oh, hang on, I gotta get this. Hello? Seriously? They're back? <laughs> Even better. Well, I guess Microsoft re-released Power Toys for Windows 10 and 11. <laughs> Not gonna need that. So let's take a look at it. Stay tuned. This week's sponsor is me. If you'd like to support this channel, the best way is to pick up a t-shirt at cybercputech.com. All my t-shirts are extremely high quality and durable. These are the same shirts I wear in videos. So if you like the shirt I'm wearing, then head over to cybercputech.com and pick yourself up one today. Am I seriously the last person to know this? Microsoft Power Toys was a set of utilities targeted at power users originally released for Windows 95. These utilities covered a wide array of different features. This included a utility that would allow you to open cabinet files as regular folders, or even one for opening the command prompt with your current path and file explorer. It was a huge list of utilities. However, the utility that Power Toys was best known for was Tweak UI. This utility would allow you to customize the user interface of Windows. I started my career as a computer tech in a small little computer store shortly after the Y2K debacle in the year 2000. At that time, Windows 98 was the dominant version of Windows on the market, and Windows Power Toys was pretty much known for Tweak UI and then all that other stuff that people never actually cared about. So, when recently a few people in the comments of other videos told me that Microsoft had re-released Power Toys, my first thought was Tweak UI. Unfortunately, I was a little disappointed to find out that Tweak UI is not included in the new version of Power Toys. I'm not sure why it was left out, but considering Microsoft's unwillingness to make it easy to customize their more recent versions of Windows, it's really not that surprising. However, the new Power Toys does come with some pretty decent utilities. That's what we're gonna be looking at today. So, let's jump on the computer and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So to start out with, the first thing you need to do is actually install Power Toys. Now the link to that is available in the description below, but essentially Power Toys is now on GitHub and it's a completely open source project. So if you'd like, you can actually download the source code if you wanna dig through it and see how it's made. Otherwise, you can go ahead and download the actual Power Toys setup file itself and install it on your system. I already have it installed on this one and I'll keep a link to this in the description below so if you'd like to download it for yourself. So once you get Power Toys installed, you should have this little utility right here that's essentially just a settings area just for Power Toys. And they kind of try to mimic the Windows 11 settings right here. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the majority of these right here and I'll kind of give you an overview of what they do. This isn't gonna be a huge exhaustive video about Power Toys. I'm just gonna kind of give you a once over of the different features and stuff like that that it comes with. So to start out with, let's just start at the very top of the list and the first utility is always on top. And what this utility does is it allows you to give any application the ability to always be on top. Like for instance, okay, let's go ahead and open up our calculator here. So if we wanted our calculator to be on top, as you can see now, it falls to the back as soon as you click on another window. Well, if you were to use always on top, you activate it with the shortcut key, Windows Control T. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on calculator, hit Windows Control T, and right there, that gives us, it's always on top. So now if we click on something else, our calculator will always be on top. And it also has this little border that goes around it right here to kind of indicate that that's what's happening on this one. And if you wanna turn it off, it's the same thing. Control Windows T, we'll turn it off, and there you go. So it's a really simple utility. So that's essentially what Power Toys is about. It's small little utilities that help to give you more added functionality within Windows. And some of them are actually quite useful. Let's see some more of them. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and close our calculator here, and the next one we're gonna look at is Awake. And what this one does right here is it just allows you to bypass whatever power plan you currently have to keep the system awake. Now for this one, there isn't a shortcut key to turn it on. You have to actually go into the settings here, and you can click right here, and you can say keep 
awake indefinitely and it'll keep the system awake indefinitely. And it's literally that simple. It's not very much to it. So the next one we're going to look at is color picker. And this one right here, I think is a really helpful utility. In fact, this one's the one I think I'm going to use the most. But anyway, you hit the Windows Shift C in order to activate it. So let's go and find something that we want to take a color from. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my pictures here. And let's say we want to take the blue from her headdress right here. So the way we would do that is hit Windows Shift C. This will open up our color picker. And as you can see right there, as we move this over the picture here, we can see that the color picture is changing. So I'm going to pick a really nice blue in here. We're going to go ahead and click it and then the color picker will open up. It'll give us the hex RGB as well as many other different forms of color, you know, essentially. And what we can do is we can use this by clicking on the hex version of this color and use it in whatever art program that we have. For somebody that uses color, you should know exactly why this is helpful. You know, another really neat feature on this right here is it does also give you the RGB color scheme as well. So if you'd like, you can actually use the RGB settings in order to even change the color of your RGB lights in your system, which honestly, I think that'll come in really handy at some point, especially if you have a color you really want to replicate within your RGB lights. This is a cool little program to do it. So, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and close this right here. Let's move on to the next one now. So the next one we're looking at is fancy zones. And this one here essentially works similar to the way Windows 11 handles different zones on the systems. So to activate this, you click on the Windows shift and then the key to the left of one, which nobody knows the name of. Just like that. And it should open up the fancy Windows settings. And from here, you can go through and you can customize how you want these fancy zones to be laid out. Now, I already created a custom zone right here. So we're going to go ahead and try to actually use it and see what happens. So what we're going to do is open up our file explorer here and use our file explorer to test with. And the way that you use this is you hold the shift key down while you're moving the window and it will highlight your fancy zones just like that. So when you click on one of them, it'll snap it in that position. And one setting that I highly recommend changing is that like, for instance, if I were to grab this right now and move it away, you can see it keeps its same shape. It doesn't revert back to the shape that we had it before. And if you go into this fancy zone settings, you can scroll down and you go all the way down here to where it says restore original size of window when up snapping. So we're click on that. And now let's go ahead and try this again. So we're going to hold the shift key. We're going to move it over, snap it in place. And then when we drag it away, it restores it back to the way that it originally was. I'm not sure why this isn't a setting by default, but it's not. It is what it is, though. So we're going to go ahead and close this. And let's move on to our file explorer add ons. Now, essentially, the File Explorer add-ons just give you different preview icons. So if we're going to go over, I'm going to open up File Explorer now. And let's go ahead and open up Documents. And as you can see in Documents right here, we have a whole bunch of different documents set up. And I have a lot of PDF files right here. So let's say I want to have previews for PDF files. So we can come over here. We can go ahead and check these right here. We're going to go ahead and flip these on. And now, if you look, all of a sudden, we have a whole bunch of previews for the PDF files that we currently have. So as you can tell with this one, it's a really simple add-on that essentially just enhances the previews that you get in File Explorer. And like I've shown in other ones, that's essentially all Power Toys is, is it gives you the ability to have little bitty added functionality within Windows. Some of these are really useful. Some of them, not so much. Let me show you those now. Okay, so if we go ahead and close this, the next one we're going to look at is Image Resizer. Now, this one actually is quite helpful. And if you click on, we're going to go ahead and open File Explorer again. We're going to go into Pictures. Now, let's say, for instance, that you want to resize one of these pictures, but you don't want to open it up into an art program. So if you right-click on it, you can go down and you can hit Resize Picture right here. And if you click on that, it essentially gives you this little window right here that allows you to select from either custom or different common sizes. So if we were to click on large and we hit resize, then we'll actually resize that, but it'll make a copy of it when it resizes. So now moving on to the next one, we have Keyboard Manager, which Keyboard Manager essentially just allows you to remap keys or shortcuts on your keyboard. Let me show you how this could be used to really mess with someone. So we're going to go ahead and click on remap key. And then from here, we're going to click the plus sign. 
then push the button type right here. And I'm gonna take the letter A, hit OK, and we're gonna replace that with the letter F and hit OK. And then go ahead and hit OK again here. We're gonna hit continue anyway. And right there we can see that we've remapped A to F. So we're gonna go ahead and open up our notepad. And then with notepad open, we can type something like, all this is doing is changing the letter A. And as you can see, every time I typed A, it gave F. So as you can see, other than the comedic value of this, it really does come in handy if you wanna remap a key to do something else. Like for instance, if you're using a keyboard that happens to be a different language and the keys are in different orders, well, you can always remap the keys back to the way they were, or you can always just change your keyboard layout too, but you know, it is what it is. Okay, so in order to undo this, if you ever have this done to you, all you have to do is go into the section here, click on the remaps themselves, hit the little trash can, hit OK, and then it'll be gone. So the next one we're gonna look at is mouse utilities. And with mouse utilities, this one essentially gives you a couple of different things that you can do with, with your mouse. As an example, if we were to lose the mouse on the screen somewhere, we can always double tap control and it will highlight our mouse for us so we can find it. Also, if we want to, we can come down and we can enable our mouse highlighter. So where if it's turned on, you hit the Windows Shift H. So Windows Shift H will turn that on and you can actually go through and you can highlight stuff. So if you're doing a video and you wanna highlight a specific thing, you can click down on your left mouse button and then highlight something. And that comes in pretty handy too. However, this one right here, especially if you're having a problem with sight, then this one can come in really handy. I actually have a few customers that I think would benefit from this a lot. But if you turn on this crosshair right here and then con hit Control Alt P, it will actually give you crosshairs within your Windows screen. And the mouse works essentially exactly the same as it would any other way. You can always click on it exactly how you would normally, and you just have crosshairs show up instead. So now first, we're gonna turn all of this off right here, then move on to the next feature. So the next one is Power Rename. And this one will allow you to rename multiple files in bulk. So if we were to go into our Documents folder and we wanted to rename a bunch of these right here, we could highlight them, we could right click, and we can click on Power Rename, and we could rename our different files to whatever we wanted. This could come in handy if you have a bunch of different files to rename at once, but Essentially, that's all it does. It's a file renamer. So we're gonna go ahead and close this, and then we're gonna move on to the next one, which is Power Toys Run. Now this one right here, I think can come in really handy. If, in order to activate it, you just hit Alt Space, and it gives you this little window that pops up in the top right here, and you can run whatever command you run. It's essentially the run command, but it's in the middle of the screen right here, and it's an easy way to get to it just by hitting Alt Space in order to turn it on or off. And then the next feature we got here is our shortcut guide. And the shortcut guide, this one I think honestly is probably the most worthless tool in the entire set. But you know, it's here if you wanna use it. But if you hit Windows Shift forward slash, it'll give you all the shortcuts that are available on the screen that you're currently on. So yeah, if you wanna have all the shortcuts available to you, then there it is. Then the last one we're gonna look at is video, video conferencing mute. Now video conferencing mute is essentially exactly what it sounds like. If you enable this right here, it will allow you to mute either the microphone or the video on whatever video conferencing you're doing. So if you do a lot of video conferencing, this could actually come in really handy, the ability to mute your video or audio or both. In fact, this is a feature that Jeffrey Tubin probably could have used. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, Google it. It's pretty funny. So, but either way, as you can see, there's definitely some useful utilities that come with the new Microsoft Power Toys. Even though Power Toys is now just those other apps without Tweak UI. But you know what? Some of these utilities really are useful. For instance, I'm probably gonna use the color picker quite a bit. 
hopefully some of them will be useful to you too. The nice thing is you can always disable the utilities you don't plan on using and just keep the ones that you want enabled. However, if it really disappoints you, like it does me, that they took Tweak UI out of the Power Toys, then check out this video where I show you how to customize the UI of Windows 11 in ways that Microsoft definitely doesn't approve of. Have a great day.